So here's something I want you to always remember. When you're trying to solve a system of equations and you have two equations that are solved already for both y or both x, not one or the other, but when they are both solved for the same variable, then all you simply need to do is set the two equations equal to each other because y is equal to 2x minus 1 as well as y is equal to a negative 2x plus 7. So therefore, if I need to solve this system, the best, fastest thing I'm going to want to do is just set the two equations equal to each other. Now, we come up to a little problem though, don't we? Because in this case, you can see here, we have a fraction as our coefficient with x, and then here, this is not a fraction. So that's gonna break us down into two different camps, right? Those students that love fractions and those students that hate fractions. But I think we can all agree, there's probably actually not two camps. I think everybody just hates fractions. However, I do wanna show you two different ways to be able to solve this. One with using fractions to your advantage, and the other one is forgetting about fractions and kind of pretending that they never existed, okay? I think it's really important to make sure that you are comfortable when dealing with fractions and not to just kind of overlook them. In this case, I have a two thirds, right? Now let's go and take a look at the first way, which would actually be using fractions to our advantage. Okay, so I think you guys recognize that we're gonna solve for x, we gotta get x's to the same side, right? So I'm gonna be adding a two x over here on the left-hand side. Now, I'm gonna add it while obviously on the right-hand side as well as the left-hand side, but when I add a two x over here, that's just going to eliminate it, right? But now I need to add a two to the two thirds, right? Because when we are adding our, when we're adding, you know, two variable expressions together, we're adding the coefficients. So I need to be able to way to, how do I add two thirds plus a negative two rather kind of efficiently? And the way that we're gonna do that is just to go ahead and rewrite our negative two as a fraction with a denominator of three. So before I can get that, let's go ahead and get our variables on the same side and our constants on the same side. Okay, so now I want you to see what exactly I went ahead and created. And now we need to be able to develop is saying like, all right, how can I go ahead and rewrite <laughs> this two as being with a denominator of three? Well, here's a little trick. All we simply need to do is put a two over a one, right? Because that's still gonna be the same number. Two over two over one is still a two. Now, all I simply need to do is multiply by three on the top and the bottom. And what that does is now that creates a six over a three. So let's go ahead and rewrite this now in a simplified equation here. All right, and now what I want you to see is, okay, what if I'm gonna be combining them? Remember, you keep the denominator remains the same, but you add or you apply the operation to the numerators, which is now going to give me an eight over three x is equal to eight. Okay, and now if I need to go ahead and go ahead and solve for x, all I need to do is, you know, divide by eight thirds or multiply by the reciprocal on both sides. Okay, and now you can see that when I multiply by the reciprocal here, the eights are going to divide out. That's now gonna leave me with an x is equal to three. Now, here's the cool thing. If you love your fractions, then you now need to go ahead and solve for y. Now, which one of these do you wanna choose? Do you wanna choose the top equation or the bottom equation? Well, the top equation has fractions. So why don't we like embrace the fractions, okay? Let's go ahead and plug in this three into this x of this equation, which is already solved for y, right? That's why I love these equations when they already have them solved for a variable. It makes your life a little bit easier. You have less algebra that you need to do to go ahead and get this to be solved for x. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug the three in for the x and I'll show you with using fractions again, how we can use our understanding of fractions to actually solve this equation rather simply. And you can see, I didn't take the three that much farther, right? I just really brought it down here and that's a three, but I'm keeping it at pink because I want you to see that is the three that I'm using there. Now again, I did this operation over here, right? When you're trying to apply operations, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, make sure you're looking at an integer as a fraction. If you don't have your integer as a fraction, then put it over one. Now you can see you can multiply straight across if you want to, right? Two times three is six, three times one is three, six divided by three is two. Or you can simply just divide out those terms and because everything's separated by multiplication and you get a two divided by one, which is just two. And then you have a two minus a one is going to be a y is equal to one. Now, some students absolutely hate fractions. Like I'm telling you, they hate fractions. They will do 10 times more work if they need to, to avoid doing fractions. Now, in this case, I don't think we need to do more work, but there is a really, really easy way to avoid using fractions. And I don't want you to have that feeling. I want you to be able to make sure you can understand and feel comfortable dealing with fractions. But if you have to deal with the time test or you know you're gonna make a lot of mistakes with fractions, the best way I like to have you approach a problem when dealing with fractions is just to simply get rid of the fractions. So how do you get rid of the fractions? We'll use a scalar. And what I mean by using a scalar, multiply the whole equation, and it's very, very important, you make sure you multiply everything 
by the scalar. And what you, how do I chose three? The reason why I chose three is because you want to find a scalar that your denominator is going to evenly divide into. So if you have multiple fractions, you want to have all of those denominators to make sure they're going to evenly divide into that number. That's a lot of times what we call the least common denominator. But now I only have one denominator here, which is three, so it's kind of simple. So I'm going to multiply everything by a three. Okay, now again, notice here when I multiply three times two thirds, you can think of that as a three over one. So therefore the threes divide out. That's why I'm just leaving there with the two X and just make sure that the signs are going to, you know, carry over. Cause a lot of times students will mix that up, including myself, will make that mistake. So just make sure you double check your work. Looks like everything's good. Then just like we did over here, get the X's to the same side and the constants to the same side. And now I can just use my inverse operations to go ahead and solve for an X, which should be the exact same answer I had over here, which is a three. Aha, uh -huh, it is. And then again, I have this three. Now, if you don't like fractions, you don't want to plug it into this one, right? You're going to plug it into this equation. So again, we still should get the one, but let's just go ahead and check it out to make sure that we are all set. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen, two different ways with fractions and without fractions to go ahead and solve when you have a system of equations, both equal to Y.